You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, car chase, the gap between reality and fantasy. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. We had the Sussexes' version of events, which by most reasonable minds that received it thought, doesn't stack up. The whiff of bullshit is strong here, really seems manufactured, as she of Grandma's bedspread sought once again to rewrite history and to create drama, because she has nothing else to offer. We have examined evidence that has been put forward from the taxi driver, the observations of the New York mayor, a retired police detective. We've looked at some of the video footage, and it doesn't support the melodramatic description that was pumped out by the Sussexes, Kel Surprise. But what's the reaction been? Well, many individuals, of course, just simply did not believe it, thought it was a load of horseshit, and have commented as such across social media. But what about mainstream media? What's its reaction been? Well, it certainly had plenty of coverage. All you need to do is pull up an appropriate news feed, and you are then confronted by a mass of headlines about this supposed car chase. There is a body of information where CNN, exclusive, Prince Harry and Harry's wife's security detail says car chase could have been fatal. The Washington Post, Prince Harry and Harry's wife involved in near catastrophic car chase with paparazzi. NBC New York, Prince Harry and Harry's wife chased by reckless paparazzi after NYC event. New York Post, inside the drama of Prince Harry and Harry's wife's NYC paparazzi chase ordeal. Geo.tv, Harry's wife, Prince Harry, blasted for exaggerating alleged New York car chase. BBC, Prince Harry and Harry's wife say New York City car chase was relentless. AP News, Prince Harry and Harry's wife made getaway in NYC taxi after being trailed by paparazzi. Axios, Prince Harry, Harry's wife, involved in near-catastrophic car chase. Page 6. Shaken, Harry's wife, Prince Harry, involved in near-fatal paparazzi chase in NYC. The Independent, Omid Scobie, attacks royal family as palace silent on car chase. They're probably silent, you goon, because they're too busy laughing their tits off at this nonsense. Sky News, Prince Harry and Harry's wife, paparazzi car chase was not near-catastrophic, NYPD officials suggest. New York Times, Prince Harry and Harry's wife say they were chased by paparazzi in New York. CBS News, Harry, Harry's wife in car chase spokesperson calls near catastrophic. NBC News, Prince Harry and Harry's wife involved in near catastrophic car chase with paparazzi in New York. Variety, Harry and Harry's wife involved in near catastrophic paparazzi car chase and on and on it goes. Al Jazeera, CNN and so forth, all reporting on this along with The Telegraph, The Times, The Sun, The Mirror, and many other newspapers around the world. So Harry's wife got her wish for near-blanket coverage of this nonsense, albeit, while some are just reporting what was pumped out, others start to question it. And as the dust settles, or perhaps it wasn't that whipped up in the first place because there wasn't anybody really speeding, we turn to The Telegraph and Camilla Tomine states the no-nonsense NYPD response to the Sussexes' challenging journey takes the drama out of their tale. The first statement was laced with a sort of hyperbole we have come to expect from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex when alleging media intrusion into their lives. According to their spokespeople, the couple had been involved in a near-catastrophic car chase at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi taking place over two hours through the streets of New York City after Harry's wife had collected a vision woman of vision of ward in a gold strapless 1,500-pound Johanna Ortiz dress. This relentless pursuit had resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians, and two NYPD officers. The NYPD's response was somewhat less dramatic. There were numerous photographers, 
that made their transport challenging, the force said in a statement, clarifying that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination and there were no reported conditions, summonses, injuries or arrests in regard. Clearly, a celebrity's near-catastrophic relentless pursuit is a copper's challenging transport situation. Notwithstanding exactly what happened on Tuesday night in the Big Apple, Harry and Harry's wife, who were joined by her mother, Doria Ragland, were clearly upset at the behaviour of some photographers. A cynical observer might question the timing of their bombshell statement. However, coming just a day after Harry's lawyers appeared in the High Court arguing that it was not only wrong of him to be stripped of his armed Metropolitan Police protection when he's back in the United Kingdom, but unfair for him to have been denied the right to reimburse the taxpayer for it. Those familiar with the actions of the paparazzi in the United States compared with the rather tame behaviour of their British counterparts these days may also have been given pause for thought. In their shit flick series, Harry and Harry's wife repeatedly complained of being doggedly followed wherever they went. The reality, however, was rather different, with hardly any paparazzi shots of the couple appearing in UK's newspapers because so few were taken of royals in the post-Leveson era. Which is why, when it came to illustrating Harry's claim that history was repeating itself, and Harry's wife was in danger of being killed like his mother Diana, Princess of Wales, the producers had to rely on footage of paparazzi at unrelated events. One image, purportedly to be a photographer's capturing the couple at a royal event, was actually taken at the Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 movie premiere in 2011. It was accompanied by Harry saying, I had to do everything I could to protect my family. Another video clip showed photographers swarming a vehicle thought to be Harry and Harry's wife's, but it was actually of Michael Cohen, a one-time lawyer to former President Donald Trump, getting into a vehicle to be transported to prison on May the 6th, 2019. Footage was also used in the six-part series of the photographers outside a UK court as model Katie Price arrived to be sentenced for drink driving on December the 15th, 2021. Netflix later claimed the paparazzi shots were not meant to be literal. But even a scene showing the couple being chased in their car by a photographer was actually filmed in the United States and not the United Kingdom. There doesn't appear to be any footage of the latest two-hour chase. After what happened to Princess Diana, no one would condone the paparazzi pursuing celebrities and vehicles, not least when there were ample opportunities to photograph the couple at what was a well-publicised event. But as Harry pursues his case against the Home Office while suing no less than three British newspaper groups, it may be worth reflecting that their safety was never compromised when they were living in the leafy confines of Windsor. Great Park. This article in The Telegraph demonstrates again the propensity for lies to be told with regard to a portrayal of them being pursued, and it's quite clear that they're at it again. In cahoots with shit flicks, they used footage from elsewhere to make it look like they were being hounded, when actually they were not. As this journalist explains, the basis for hounding them in the United Kingdom doesn't exist, and, as we've explained repeatedly, the grounds for hounding in the United States doesn't exist. Harry's wife is the one that caused the paps to film her or photograph her looking like an escaped jower as she pops down the shops. She's the one that involves the paparazzi, because ultimately nobody's that interested in her compared to other famous people. And she's the one that has to generate the interest because of her massive narcissism. This is the reaction of one journalist to it, pointing out the porky pies that have been told before and clearly demonstrating that, once again, this is manufactured drama. The fact is, there is a considerable gap between the reality and the fantasy, and for a mid-range narcissist such as Harry's wife, this gap happens on a daily basis. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.